Miss Dumbum ain't your teacher today? I am. And I got a headache and the runs. So I say, time for recess. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to an all new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brennan McCorkle, and Mike, the Lotion Master Crawford. What's up, bud? <laughs> the Lotion Master sounds really weird. Well, <laughs> you are always lotioning. Is that right? I do keep lotion like everywhere, but it's because I'm black, bro. And as much as you got to wash your hands these days with COVID and shit, can yeah. be out here look like you're punching flour. So, you know, I keep it. I keep it moisturized. Yeah, I'm pretty chalky. As we've discussed before, (laughs) white people are chalky. I went to the barber today, and he was, like, giving me the shave up. And he's like, "Uh, your skin's a little dry, homie. I was like, I know, just do, just whatever. Do your thing. I don't know. (laughs) Man, how many people do you know that walk out of the barber and keep the, like, the lines of, like, the I just got shaved lotion on? No, son. I know some people who do, even though it's it, a way. Is that like a uh, like a sticker on the hat flex? Like I just got this done, like I can afford to yeah. go to the barber. Yeah, bro. That's so whack, dude. Some people actually think it looks you know, decent. Then why wouldn't they do makeup every day, like little white makeup on your face? Because men shouldn't be doing makeup every day, bro. Oh yeah, you were talking about you're shouldn't. putting lotion on. Here's a here's a fun little stupid thing I did. So you were talking about putting lotion on before. You're like, just in case anybody sees this, I don't want to look ashy. And I was like, yeah, no, camera can't pick that up. So much so, like, in the very beginning, if I had really, really bad, like, I wasn't sleeping, baggy eyes, like, I'd put a little makeup on there, go in my old lady's stash, and just be like, let's see if this works. Guess what? I doubt that it made a difference, so it doesn't matter, well, and I wear you makeup. You actually put on makeup. <laughs> that is yeah, I put, on, I put on lipstick yeah, before can see it when I was oh, an adult. Well, all right, stop telling me what I did. I did. I made a video of it, you dick. It was for fun. <laughs> It's on this wonderful YouTube platform. It was making fun of the Billy Madison thing. It was doing a parody. Oh, so they're already judging you. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was for fun. My sisters used to do that to me as a kid. Make me dress up in their clothes and, like, put makeup on me and shit when I was... <laughs> Bless you, son. Uh, yeah, that was... I feel bad for you, son. Dude, that's one of the many reasons why I'm the way I am and weird and... I don't know, girlish at times. <laughs> I was raised by chicks, man. That's how it works. They're around me all the time. And guess what, Mike? Here's another little ditty for you. Let's just pile it on, okay? We've been talking lately about showering and stuff. I went to the gym and the barber. No shower before this podcast. Whoa, that's absolutely disgusting. Man, you give me more time. That, that's that's absolutely disgusting. That's first. Second, I already slept in that room. I know how hot it is in there. You think you stank before the podcast? But no, the because it's, it's over, you're, you're gonna be double stank. It's <laughs> January. We have the heater on. It's been raining. It's not hot in here. It's actually very nice in here right now. For oh, one, yeah, it's I, like I, the I only time of the year. Rain. It's like the only time of the year it's nice in here. But yeah, it's been raining. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> So you know how I'm kind of rude-ish to some of these parents with the school situation. All these fools, <laughs> it's like we just got back from winter break and school's back in session this week. And not only did people forget, it was raining like a lot. For Southern California, it was like nonstop rain, which is pretty crazy for a couple of days. But I went to go leave one morning, and this lady was blocking my drive. Like, I go to get in my car, and I go to pull out of the driveway, 
and then some lady just flat on blocking the driveway. We also have a fire hydrant kind of in front of our house on the corner, so it's like a red zone. And so instead of instead of exactly instead of blocking that, she chose to block my driveway. So if you're curious, yes, I made this lady stare me down, make her kid get back in the car in the rain. She got back in the car, moved it, and then had to get back out in the rain so I could leave. I, I just I just stared at her. I didn't say anything, but I just stared at her like, y- you better move. And I wouldn't have did it. I'm not going to lie. I would have pissed you. I would have started your day shitty as hell because I would have dropped my kid off before I moved my car, buddy. Sorry. I oh, well, see, that's the, the thing is she totally had that option. Because I, I have a rounded driveway. I, have, I could have backed out the other side. But I just wanted to prove a point of like, hey, man, somebody lives here. It's not just like no, a model I, home. And then and she I didn't totally have understand. to get back in her car or that tell her kid wrong. to. But she did. And, they and did. I understand that I'm wrong in this situation. But outside in the rain, I'm going to go ahead and finish this rain job, buddy. Sorry. No See, thing. and I would have I would have not been happy about it, but I would have accepted it. I more wanted to make the point of like, hey man, but I was pretty happy that she got back in the car. Because that's what I would have done too. Like I wouldn't have blocked it in the first place, but had I put myself yeah. in that situation, I'd have been like, Yeah, you know what? And eh, you're gonna make fun of dad for this later. Get back in the car. We gotta move. And then she just backed up mm-hmm. that ten feet. To block the fire hydrant. It'd be hilarious if somebody came by and gave her a ticket right there. I would grab my kid and be like, hey, get inside. Yeah. I'd just been like, hey, go cross the street. I can see you from here. <laughs> You're good. You're yeah. good. <laughs> I got to sign you in. Ah, good stuff with the rainy days. And funny enough, as I was on my way to the gym, it's still packed. It, now it's packed more than ever. It's like, I don't know if I hit that bad second week. still within week. your first two weeks, huh? Yeah, I think it's in that bad second week pocket to, like, not only was it, like, the people that didn't do it the first week, they're like, okay, for sure I got to go week two. <laughs> they came, but then it was raining. So it's like, there's nothing to do but go to the gym when it's raining in L.A. It's like, you know. So that happened. But I fun, went with, with all the rain. LA's not prepared for this garbage. So there's a power outage at the gym in the morning. Ooh. And I walk in, but like there's been power, like the alarm's gone off before, like randomly. And we're like, hey, should we leave? And everybody's like, mm, I don't know. And nobody ever leaves. So I walk in and the power's already out. Like there were street lights out already this morning. So I go to the gym and I'm like, well, let's So you just- still go in with the power out? Well, that was the thing is I didn't know the power was out because they have the emergency lights on. And being in construction, I know that for every certain amount of feet, you have to have a certain amount of illumination. So I think it was like for every 80 to 100 square feet, you had to have a light so that in a, an event of emergency that this always has power. This will never go off unless the entire grid gets shut down. So... There was emergency lighting, so basically temporary lighting. And all the alarms are going off. There's no music. It's dead silent. And it's basically like random. You just hear some random clanking, and but the gym is packed. Mm-hmm. It's packed to the gills, Mike. Everybody is still just wrenching away at all these things. So I walk in, I was just kind of like... You guys are still all y'all are a bunch of weirdos. I was like, "You're still open." Out in the dark. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, it's still we're still here." I was like, "Okay then." And I just walked right into the locker room and started to get after it. And that's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, "These are the meatheads that I need in my life. These people that are like, mm-hmm. what electricity? No, we're here to lift rocks." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. that." Let's no matter what this shit, like let's do it. No, no, no bad idea. You know, I don't know. I was kind of, I was kind of half looking forward to the experience of it being just like, okay, this is new. It's kind of half dark. You just zone into whatever you're doing, zone into the song and the AirPods and stuff. And then by the time I was and like halfway, some bad shit happens. Everybody's gonna be looking around like, oh, I should have went home. Yeah, Bring that's home true. But it's also it's the gym in. LA. It's that like shit nothing. happens everywhere now. And when it gets dark and lights go out like... and power outages. 
But here's the thing. So the be safe. The locker room lights were still on. And so I was like, okay, fine. Go and get changed. Because that was kind of my... I just kept walking in and like assessing it. I'm like, there's just barely enough light to feel comfortable here. But like, just barely. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, that this might be fun. And if I wasn't having fun after 15 minutes, I'd have bounced. But I was like, this might be fun to have a weird gym experience. And then I went into the locker room and it was well lit. And then like halfway through changing, it was like I heard music going on and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. But a lot like all the urinals and toilets and everything are like electronic. So it kind of like it smelled like shit. (laughs) At first it smelled like shit, but that doesn't bother me. I've been in construction, man. And then when the the power comes back, all of them just flush at once. (laughs) (laughs) That's the ultimate swirly session. Oh, but speaking of smelling like crap, guess what? (laughs) I've had the stinkiest everything, uh, including from... That's what happens when you don't shower. From entry to exit. No, no, no. It's much worse, Mike. So I got this thing that my buddy showed me back when we were children. Like, children, children. And we both like spicy stuff. So what he would do is take hard-boiled eggs, and instead of pickling them... Have you ever had pickled hard-boiled eggs? No. Me neither. Sounds gross. I've seen people eat them, though, but I've never eaten them. Right. Same, same deal. So what we would do pickled is put it... Sunflower seed. Shout out to the project. Yeah. So we would put it in jalapeno juice with carrots and onions and let it pickle in that so that it soaked up all the spiciness. And so... And then you just stick them in the fridge and let them soak up, okay? And so I broke open this batch. And, I like, you eat the egg and take a bite of jalapeno, a little bit of carrot with some onion. Like, it's a whole thing that you do, okay? okay. Maybe some chips. So that being said, hard-boiled eggs are already nasty. And these got jalapeno stank on them, too. <laughs> Guess how long they were in the fridge before I ate them. I don't want to know. Guess. Nasty. Just Two weeks. guess. I just guessed. Two weeks. No, that's a weak guess. It's me, Mike. It's me what eating do you mean? This. Why is it a weak guess? Why is it a weak guess? Because it's me. It's way grosser than two weeks. For hard-boiled eggs to be in this jalapeno carrot onion liquid. And then eat them just... So you ate... How so? Oh, so, so you hard boiled yeah, egg. Yeah, that's a, that's more appropriate. Set it response. in this concoction. Yes. And you let it sit in this concoction longer than two weeks, and still ate it. Yeah, and it's so good. I still have a. Con- I saved like two eggs. That's absolutely time. fucking disgusting. Let me just tell the world. Okay. And what you let it sit there like a month? Longer. Higher, over. I don't want to guess. I don't. I don't want to guess anymore, Brendan. I'm, my stomach is starting to turn already. Like this, this sounds like a really bad idea. They, I put them no in there. Your body about like April, so it's been about nine months. What the fuck, <laughs> bro? You're gonna need to go to the doctor now. It just stinks real bad when I fart. Like the worst. No, no, no. Like eggs sitting that long. I don't know if that's good for your body. Like that. I think you might need to go to the doctor. No, it's just I'm fine. You you say that out your mouth until your body says otherwise, bro. Like that's nasty. I mean, I definitely knew when I was pooping that out. Like (laughs) there was no confusion about which meal is this. Like anything sitting for nine months has to be bad for you. Like it has to have gone bad. I don't know. I mean, I'm still when here. You hard boil them, you turn them into regular food, and then you put them back in the fridge for nine months, and you think that's still good? Yeah, it like, preserves it, Mike. No, the freezer preserves it. The fridge doesn't. Yeah, it's but it's the like the pick. But it's here's the thing: it's the 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 jalapenos and the carrots and the onions all come in a in a jar already. It's like it's already pre-made to be. Um, what's the word? Starts with a P. Preserved. preserved, but yeah, but not for nine months. Like if you look on the yeah, today, but here's the thing: is the stuff nothing in, is made to be for nine months. But the stuff in the can, the preservatives that keep the jalapenos and carrots and onions 
in the oh yeah, I'll throw some gar- fresh garlic in there too. I forgot. Um, in the can, the preservatives that keep those that it's like, hey, this can you could open it up until twenty twenty five and it's good. That's what keeps the egg from rotting into some kind of nastiness. It's the preservatives in the. I juice. see what you're saying. What I'm saying, is I'm not once saying you it's opened it for everybody. There's a sell by or due date. It's usually not nine yeah, months later. Yeah, it's usually though. refrigerate after opening. Yes, and then it's still dead in like six months, not nine months. Wrong. The egg's been I'm dead a, since birth. Is an egg I'm ever go, alive? The chicken or the egg? No, I'm going to look at wing. my egg cart and, and see what the expiration date is. I just bought it yesterday. I'm going to go look when it shows Just up. a weird little so sidebar. I, I doubt it's nine months. Could you bring the chicken and the egg argument to Roe vs. Wade? Like what? if they brought that back, the chicken and the egg. I don't know. Just seems like why there's would a they bring the chicken? There. Why would the chicken and the egg? What comes first, the chicken or the egg? And then they're like, okay, at what point? In the is Roe vs. Wade argument, there's no, there's no way to make babies without human beings. So the human beings were here first. So if it's the whole whatever theory you believe, if you believe in Darwinism or you're religious and you believe in God, whatever the case may be. There had to be human beings. Okay, well, if that's the case, then chickens make their own decisions. We just solved that problem. See? Chicken and the egg argument should be brought to the courts. We just solved it. Done. Why? We did our... our... That's a women's right to choose federally. Bam. Done. Because if a chicken was before the egg, then it's not like something happened along the way. There was no evolution process as to where we can't make our own decision about how things are supposed to go. If the chicken came first, then the chicken decides what happens. Damn it. It's the chicken's the chicken world. Had, there's no way to create a chicken without an egg. Okay. I mean, an egg now we're back to square. We just sold ourselves out of the sale, Mike. Damn it. What? Now we're back to square one. Now we have to go back to the uh, chicken crossing the road. We're just, we're... We lost. It, what the hell are you talking we about? We lost. Brother? It. So at the lock, uh, okay. So at the gym, like I've already talked <laughs> about, two guys sharing a locker. There was somebody that even even one of the bros got taken aback because they were sharing a locker, and then the guy was like, "Can I put my stuff in your bag?" And the guy's like, "You already had the locker next to me. Now you want to put your stuff in my bag?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, I just don't have one." The guy reluctantly agreed, but I'm like, mm, that would not be my gym buddy ever again. I'm I'm just confused. If you're sharing lockers, why do you have a problem from putting stuff? You already willing to share lockers. No, he wasn't that. sharing a locker. I already said that I thought it was weird that some time ago I saw two people sharing a locker that didn't show up with the intent of doing that. It was like somebody showed up with their buddy and was like, hey. While we're here, can I put my stuff in your locker? And I was like, huh, that was odd. Fast forward to this week. Yeah, it doesn't want to buy a lock or carry his stuff (laughs) around. And so fast forward to this week, and it was somebody used the locker next to him, but then wanted to put their stuff in their bag, like to not carry it out. So it was like. He He didn't have a lock either. I don't know. I just thought that was weird. That's even weirder. Home. Sharing a sweaty bag with your sweaty stuff. When you so the stuff, both of your stuff is sweaty. Does it matter at that point? Well, here's the, the thing: like, is the if we both go to the gym and then I put my sweaty stuff in your bag, that's not weird to you. Because not then you're carrying them out around my sweaty stuff, and then my sweaty stink that's different than yours is going to be in there when you pop it open and take. All the stuff out, and then I'm now you pop have... it open and throw all the stuff in the wash. So I know, but matter. then you still have both contaminated sweatiness. Somebody I else, don't. you know how like your farts, you're like, yeah, that's whatever. It's not great, but I got it. But then somebody if else it's farts. My friend, I don't care about a contaminated sweaty stuff. It's just clothes. So I could fart water. in your general direction, and you're just smelling the breeze, easy. Cover girl. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Is a fart? We're going to tell you not to fart. But you're going to just not care? You're going to be totally cool with it. Oh, long as you say, excuse me. What, what if I have nine month hard boiled fart. egg farts? It's just a fart. It's probably going to stink. It's just and I'm a fart. Okay. You heard it here first. But, it's just a fart. 
I can't wait till Yo, you show up. I gotta start getting function. another rotation of eggs going just so whenever you show up, it'll be like that'll be the thing. That'll be it. It'll be like that'll be the countdown to when Mike gets here. It's like the sooner you get here, the less egregious the egg will be. I'll start a batch. And then it'll be like, if you get here in March, then it's only like, by St. Patty's Day, then it's only a two-month-old egg. But if it takes you until Christmas of next year to get here, then you're going to have a two-year-old egg that I'm going to have to eat just so I could fart in your general direction. And then you're going to have to pretend like it doesn't bother you. This is a very long play, Mike, so I need you to get here soon. Brendan. What? We literally used to fart like at each other. Did you used to cup farts and throw them in your friend's face? No, that's that's not. That's a white person thing. I wasn't going to say it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but we ain't covered no farts. Okay. (laughs) Will you do it to your girl? Do you do like the the Dutch oven at all? Would you do that to the Dutch oven before? Okay. All right. Okay. So you are silly in a certain sense. You're just not like stick a finger in your asshole kind of funny. (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 Oh, man. That gives me real Nickelback vibes. Hope it don't give you Brokeback vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nickelback's like gay adjacent, but it's not. Do you know who Nickelback is? <laughs> it's a band, but why do you call them gay adjacent? I don't know. Because about. they're not homosexual in any way, but it's like... They're equi- they're, Nickelback is the equivalent of a fanny pack. You know, it's like, it's not, a you're just like, you're pack, just they like. Pass, they're past fanny pack, Brendan. That was two years ago. They were all out person now. I literally saw an interview. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, fanny packs are not gay in any sense of the word. Shoulder, a over shoulder, like Louis Vuitton purse, like something that like someone's mom should have on. It was sickening. And I'm a fan of his, but. It was sick. Man. Was Fan of who, who was it. rocking this that I didn't catch? Little baby. Oh, and he, oh, threw, and he yeah. had it over the shoulder too. Like, yep. See, I was gonna get. Uh, I still might get one of those man strappity things. Um, no. No, but leave it at the store. what if it's made out of baseball leather? I don't care if it's made out of gold. Leave it at the store, sir. What if it's made out of vaginas? I don't care. Was. It's made out of dicks. Which one would be Um, more manly? Both of them would be not (laughs) unmanly. Not unmanly, so they'd both be manly? No, they they both would be unmanly, not manly, whatever way you want to put it. Why? Because it's just a bunch of vaginas and dicks? Like, you're a pussy if you have the vagina, and then you love dick if you're walking around with a perso dick? It was on the item. The item itself. Men shouldn't have no fanny packs, no purses, none of that. We shouldn't have any of that. Okay, so can you have a wallet with vaginas or yes, dicks all over it? You can have a wallet with whatever you want on it. But why would you as a grown man walk around with a wallet with dicks on it? Why would you walk around with a wallet with vaginas on it, Mike, you whorehound? I mean, technically speaking, you might, as a man, most men in this world like vaginas. So, I mean, I can see you having a wallet with vaginas on it. Well, a most lot of people, men don't like whoever doesn't. Dicks. Most of those people like dick, so why can't they have dick on there? <laughs> they can do whatever they want, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just speaking for myself, sir. Okay. I can only speak for my... If the yeah, if you had to have something printed on your it wallet... It wouldn't be dicks. It fine, be dicks. fine. Wow. Okay, Dick Central. <laughs> That's going to be your next nickname, Dax Dicks. <laughs> all right uh it's rain and dicks so if you had to have had to have something printed on your wallet so where every time you went to pay for something you had to show it what would be printed on there that had to be on there for life stars as in the cowboys of course just stars and you like stars well, that's the way you float your boat but it would be stars me for me, yes, it would be the Cowboys. So if you saw them and thought, "I want to go to the stars," then by all means, that can be your thought, buddy. Hmm. Interesting. Cowboys for life. Cowboys no. for life. Right. Are you a Tony Romo fan for life? No, I hate Tony Romo. I hate Troy. Okay. 
And we got Trey Aikman Monday night. Fucking suck ass. Tony Romo really fell off, man. Like, he was never good, but, like, even with the, like, he was the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. And the best he did was Jessica Simpson. I mean, he did Carrie Underwood. And then he let that go. His wife is prettier than both of those people. Really? Like, like his wife's pretty hot. He's getting uglier. Did you see his recent, like, plastic surgery, man? That's what happens when you get richer. He He makes more money in the booth than he he makes more money in the booth than he did for the Cowboys. uh, He looks more like a Muppet than a human now. Uh, Ain't that some shit? It's the worst. Tom Brady will. Like he's in his early forties, man. He didn't need to do that shit yet. I'm not sitting around judging a man and what he want to do. Women start getting Botox at like 25. Yeah, bro. but his looks bad, so now that's what I'm... If it looked good, then I haven't even seen fine. Tony Romo, so I don't know. I don't, don't, don't look Tony good, Romo, man. Don't look I good. hate Tony Romo. I hate when he calls our game because he's the biggest that credit. And I understand he took your fucking job, but sit back and shut up. He took your job. That means better than you. Would you take that's Tony not- Romo's dating career? No, I would not take Tony Romo's dating career. Who has Nothing who has that, who's had like the best dating career that like that you're to me? Yeah, sure. Or just whoever. Celebrity. I mean, if you are my opinion, it's Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter is number one in my book as far as celebrity dating career. Yeah. Cause he also hooked up with like a rando basically every day. Yeah, and he hooked up with celebrities, and none of his business is in the street. That's the most important part. That's he pretty dirt. good. Aaron Rodgers is a and current. You keep it in the dark. Okay, so like current, Aaron Rodgers has a pretty good track list going. He does. He got he had Danica Patrick. In Danica there. Patrick, Olivia Munn, like a couple bangers yeah, they're there. All, they're all probably weirdos like him. And him. here's the thing is I think he dated them both for like two to three years, which is the perfect little pocket because that's just he long enough to get all the too. weirdness in there. Too. What? I think he's a girl now is a celebrity too. I just can't think of who he would though. But I think she's yeah. a celebrity. I think she's maybe a model or something probably. Yeah. What so about... What uh, does it matter? What Tom about... Brady's had the second greatest dating career behind Derek mm-hmm. Dita because he had one girl, but she was a fucking top-notch model with billions of So models. that's not a good dating career. That just He went from one model to another. It depends on what your object is. A, he has a good marriage track record. He's better than Elizabeth Taylor. Let's say that. He's the new Elizabeth Taylor. How about that? So what's the, what's the goal? Is the goal to get as many know. as possible or the best? If you wanna... Okay, like check it out. Holly Berry... Dated like Eddie Murphy, David Justice, and like Heavy D. That's yeah, a pretty good she dating career. Get, she had to get beat on camera by yeah, that was what's his name? Like, I don't know. Like fucking ass. No, no, face. I'm talking about like she had to have sex on camera with what's his name from Bad Santa? Oh, Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> there you go. Like, well, the hell with her dating career too. What do you mean? Just because she had to be on film with a white dude? Yeah, dating career stuff. Why she ain't get on film with a black dude? Hang on a second. All right, we're going to have to pump the brakes here. Billy Bob Thornton's ugly. What are you talking about? So, okay, so let's say my brother, who is similar to me, started hooking up with a celebrity black chick. You would hate on my brother because he's not black? Nope. <laughs> then what are you saying here? Is just a Billy Bob Thornton thing? Did you miss the whole her first time ever getting the scene on camera and was with a white guy? Why couldn't it be with a black guy? Did you miss that part of it? I did. Did you miss that part of the comment? Oh, okay. That's the main But part you of also part. said Billy Bob Thornton's ugly. And... She had all these good people you just named that she dated. And she okay, what if, it was, what if it was uh, John Stamos? I don't care who it was. Why did it have to be them when she was dating all these black dudes, been in movies with them, and never got that scene with them? It's nothing about Billy Bob Thornton. I don't have a problem with Billy Bob Thornton. You're missing the point here, Brendan. Okay, well, then you shouldn't have said he was ugly. It threw me off. He still is ugly. What the hell has <laughs> well, nothing to do with the point? Dude, he's man. also he's... still bad Santa, so you need to leave him alone. 
he was great in bad company. <laughs> yeah. But it sounds a fucking funny series. All of them. So I'm gonna give him his prop. Uh, speaking of John Samos, he dated uh, Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul was like him, Emilio Estevez, Arsenio Hall. I think she the was fact da- that you know who dated some dated chicks for a while. No okay. <laughs> Can we say on the other side of the spectrum from Derek Jeter, the GOAT, but for all the but wrong are you, reasons? Are you going to like leave out J-Lo if you're talking women GOATs? Like J-Lo, J-Lo is like, listen... Top notch, bro. Like, yeah, but she yeah, was with Diddy like Diddy. twice. That's I can't trust anybody that went to Diddy twice. I worked in her home once when about? she was with Mark Anthony, but she was not Mark there. Anthony, uh, living la vida loca. Yes, 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 yes. No, she was with uh, 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 Glacius, that guy. Yeah, and he was living la vida. That's not, loca? not, no, Ricky Martin, the pedophile on his own family, <laughs> oh, is la vida she, loca. She, Don't she, do that to JLo. She was doing, she was with, uh, Ricky Iglesias did roles like her. And, uh, dude, when she was a fly athlete. girl, you dude? know, she was banging she was, like all the Wayans she, brothers, she, she, Jim Carrey. <laughs> now you've been putting smut on her name, bro. Like, yeah. I just she hope it's that. true. I hope she likes funny guys. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> For you. I hope she likes me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. So what about the goat of the, of the, the bad? Like the the opposite of Derek Jeter. What about Rodman? Dennis Rodman. Rodman? He had this like Paul Abdul. That's it. He don't have no real like. He went from Madonna when she was like you count Madonna. Do you like? Are you a as a to listen? A, listen to where this goes. Listen to where it goes. Madonna's the appetizer, and mind you, that was in the mid '90s when she was like the hottest thing because she is sliced bread. Now, then he went on to Tony Braxton from Madonna. You know, you know. The then he went to always... Carmen Electra, and this is all like ninety-five to like ninety-nine. These three women, he just gets better, better. Oh my god! And then his brain fell you off. You ain't got no further. choice but to go up from those. Like you went from Madonna, who's not that hot, to Tony Braxton, who's pretty hot and back then she was pretty hot i'll give her that yeah but like not like top of the scale hot and then carmen electra she was better than madonna and carmen electra is put together by a certain like yeah everybody jerked off to carmen electra even chicks when she was on singled out everybody was like mm, no something's good off to the what's the baywatch chick ice t's wife coco there you go i never watched baywatch did you? But I hate her now. I don't hate her now because that's... Hate yeah, you like just personal. don't like the milk thing. <laughs> I dislike it because that shit's weird. <laughs> that shit's weird. <laughs> that shit's weird. <laughs> and if I see ever hear this, he's probably going to hate me because everybody who calls that shit weird, he jumped the defender in reference to that because that's his wife and his daughter, and I get it. But I see, so I tell you, if you ever hear this, this shit is weird, bro. Like, she's standing up on two feet. If she can stand up and suck the nipple, it's over, bro. Like it's over. It's over. Like it's over. Those days. What if are over. what if that was the cure to your lactose issue? Was that like once a year you just had to go to mom's and be like, All right, mom, it's time for the medicine. I need I would it. be lactose. <laughs> I'm not putting my bro. <laughs> Fucking absolutely dope. Okay, what if it wasn't your mom? What if it was any person that was lactating? So, but Again, you had to. But if it was, I'm not going to stutter like, what I say at this time. If you can stand up <laughs> on your own two feet, your day on a nipple should be over. What if you're in a wheelchair? You're still. Oh, you were able at some point to stand on two feet. Your time on a nipple should be over too. Okay, what if the cure for you getting out of the wheelchair was a little bit of Cambodian breast milk? Then you need to make that decision based on your moral... Would you do it if it would I'm cure... not in a wheelchair, and I don't want to speak if... that up to an existence, so I'm not going to talk about being in a wheelchair. No, you talk about that. dinosaurs, you don't believe in that. I, Are you worried about dinosaur about breaking into your basement? 
I don't believe in dinosaurs. I believe in wheelchairs. I'm not worried about a dinosaur ever because they are not real. Wheelchairs are real, and people end up in them. Dinosaurs ain't real. I can talk about them all Are you more afraid of somebody in a wheelchair or somebody on crutches? I'm more afraid of somebody on in a wheelchair because they're actually handicapped. Somebody on the crutches is going to be back to their regular self sooner than later. Somebody in the wheelchair is, I, don't, I really can't do nothing to them. They hit me or kick me or run me over. Like, I can't do nothing. You can't beat up on no handicap. So I'm okay. at a true disadvantage. I know somebody who actually did beat up on a handicap when we were kids and it was oh, the wildest shit ever. That's not good. But the kid did spit on it multiple times. I don't know if I'd be able to take it either. Hmm. That's a tough one. Tough Speaking tough of spitting on people and they don't like it, Trevor Bauer got uh, reinstated by Major League Baseball. And surprisingly, I think because they understand that their team is in shambles, the Dodgers elected to let him, let him go. And when this comes out, if nobody's traded for him by the deadline which is Thursday at like 11 a.m. Pacific or something, um, he'll become an unrestricted free agent. Come on, Boston. And the Dodgers have to pay his $22.5 million salary this year, so anybody can sign him to the league minimum. He can literally go, sign Boston. with any any team. I the say he goes to the Angels, and the Angels just change their identity from this... Hufflepuff, powdery, sugar-coated, crap so product. Really offer him a contract? You know and then just, yeah. You know who should offer him a minimum contract, being that the Dodgers are Slim Jim. No. They need a new rep. Padres. Padres should get them. They Rivalry, could, they're paying They just signed the Nelson Cruz, this steroid injecting <laughs> the steroid ice cream dude. pudding pop. So this, to, so it's not like they care about tabloids. They're like, get it out of your system before spring training. We're si- they're like, we're signing you to a one-year deal for $2 million, okay? $500,000 signing bonus is it's January. Get that shit out of your system by April, okay? <laughs> That's your signing bonus. And then whatever we get from you, we just need you to play every three days. That's it. You'll be fine. Yeah, they need pitching anyway, so why not go get Trevor? And then Bauer, Trevor Bauer, a list of degenerates. You don't have two steroid guys, dude. Could you imagine? I don't know what's all crackly. Sorry about that. Um, could you imagine if Trevor Bauer? They're like, hey man, we want to ease you back in, and he was their middle reliever. <laughs> like that would be uh, that would just be he just goes from middle reliever to like the most dominant closer in the league. I that would be wild. Yeah, the Padres got it. this is their year. They got like a window, so they better take it. Um, uh, it's going to be the Padres and Phillies. Just throwing it out there are going to be tough it's to be. Up. Phillies where? What? The Phillies are going where? The Padres and Phillies are, like you said, that's going to be like yeah, a, in the uh, National League. a series in the middle of the season? No, no, no. At the end of the year, they have a National League Championship Series. It's called the NLCS for those of... You think it's the Phillies are going back? I think to that. I don't... Yeah, that's my... You think the Phillies are going to the NLCS, what you're saying right now here on Black Irish Podcast. At... On 111.23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one eleven twenty three is that the Phillies will make it to the Western National League time. Championship. Boy, series. you just smoked the best weed Philly got to offer. What did what you I live smoke in Cali. Today? I know you do. That's why I said I said Philly got to offer. Huh? Mm-hmm. Damn. You did the See? best weed Cali. So got you're to wrong offer. twice already. You're trying to slam me. Get your shit straight. Boy, they ain't going nowhere. They're going to stink next year. I don't think so. I think the they Braves need the one more year for their dynasty to be fully rolling. Um, but they're going to be a tough out. Bro, the Mets? The Mets? No. Le- okay, look. How bad is Carlos Correa that he's on his third signing <laughs> and he went back to the team he was just on? So check it out. San they Francisco. Still got 40 plus million a year. So, no. So San Francisco. Well, here's the deal. Huh? San Francisco offered him, 13, signed him actually, to 13 years for $350 million. I don't know how it was broken up, but roughly that's $26 million a year. Then the physical was all fucked up. So then he was 
the Mets swooped in. Scott Boris is like, I already got these guys on the line because everybody's talking three people at once. And then, so that deal was for 12 years, 315. Again, I don't know how they allocated the years, but it was roughly $26 million a year if he played his contract out. So now he goes back to the Twins, which he originally played for them last year, for six years, $200 million, which is on average $33 million a year. Oh, but it could be 260, which is 40 million, 40 plus. Yeah, that contract can be 260. It's bananas that this guy's offers got better. And he got the best one last, where he could possibly sign another Adrian Beltre deal. It's crazy. But they feel like they were protecting themselves because the shorter the deal, the easier it'll be to trade if if they stink. Because Minnesota has a good chance to stink. And you're not on the hook for this <laughs> old guy with all his knee injuries for a long time, if that's indeed what oh, happened. You sign him to this deal now, give him his money, and send him to Germany. Let him pull a Kobe, bro. Like, Chris Sale needs to be over there. Like They all need to just be on one plane to the Kobe doctor in Germany to do the knee spin. You can tell Chris Sale over there. You can send your boy. What's it, who were we just talking about? Send him. Uh, with his knee problem. Like, send him all these dudes. Just send him over there, get the blood spin, come back, good to go. Chet Holmgren, send him for his ankle. Chet Hanks, uh, send, everybody. Send, send Kawhi with his knee problem. Kawhi. Put him on one plane. Kawhi already did that, didn't he? No, he didn't ever go to Germany. Well, he did something. Something goofy. Oh, well. <laughs> Speaking of goofy, did you see that boat race they had? No. Oh, yeah, you did. It was uh, Georgia versus TCU. <laughs> that wasn't no boat race. It wasn't no race at all. It was like, remember Dude. the old Usain Bolt, like 100, 200 yard dash? Because the 100 was too short to like beat people by this much. But like 200, he would be beating people by so much. It was like they weren't in the picture when he crossed the finish line. Yeah. That's what that shit was like. That shit was utterly embarrassing. Dude, I went, I was coming home from one of my older son's activities, did like the the swap, the kid swap, and then got home to make dinner and turned it on at halftime. And I was like, oh, 38-7, there's really no point in watching this game. This is, okay, I guess this is just, I'm not going to. What else is on tonight? I don't, you know, I was like, damn, this <laughs> sucks. Like, I thought I was going to catch a second half here. It was like, seven wrong, nothing, wrong, 10 nothing. Then they went down. They had a big play, long drive with 10 7. And you're like, okay, we got a possibility of a good game. And that was it. And then they got onto third down. And you're like, oh, man, they can get a stop and get the ball back. And then McCoggy touched down. And after that, and he was like wide open. It was like nobody in the frame when he caught that touchdown. It was that, a it Usain was like, Bolt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh shit. And then after that, it was all downhill. He had three first half intercepts, like turn off. Like it was your boy was, Stetson but, Bennett looking like a real Derek Carr out there. <laughs> but yo, know, I told you. I was worried. I thought they would play good because they held up against Michigan's defensive line. Georgia's they put all their line. eggs in that basket, different. buddy. Hey, Georgia's defensive line is different. What's that hey, kid's bro, name? No. Dansby uh, Dart. Was it? What's his fucking name? You told like, the guy who was going to the NFL, uh, Jalen Carter. My uh, goodness, that boy. I wish we could draft him. Cowboys should just trade their whole draft for high, get as high as we can. Because Jalen Carter is damn near unstoppable. There's that some of these guys good. that you're just like. They're they're leaving early. Gosh, <laughs> bless America! How old is this kid? <laughs> this kid is twenty one years old. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, Six, why? Eight, I didn't know that there's a thing. <laughs> Shit, that's crazy, bro. And Georgia's like just recruiting. Did you see the halftime show when David Pollock was like, "Oh no, you said you didn't." And and say, they had Saban on there, and David Pollock is just. Upping Georgia, like, oh man, Georgia's the shit. They're taking over college football. I <laughs> did just see save his face. He just like, he's like, did, didn't you, <laughs> didn't you have a broken neck? 
Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will say I did catch that when I turned it on. Like, I turned it on at halftime, and they're talking, and Nick Saban's on the panel. And for the first time in a long time, he looked extremely happy to not be coaching that day. Because he was just like, yeah, I don't know what TCU's going to do. Like, I'm so glad I'm not coaching today because these boys are, like, it's just not fair today. Not it is playing. not fair today. And the thing about it, they'll probably get better because they they're mm-hmm. good recruiting. They're gonna yeah, they're gonna lose a couple of key guys, but it's like they're, yeah, on their defense, class they're coming in be better offensively because the quarterbacks that they recruit now are better than Stetson Bennett. Like Stetson Bennett is just a placeholder, but he happened to be a senior and he won a championship, so they weren't going to replace him and let him. They tried to replace him the first year they won the championship. I know they, they tried still so tried hard. to get rid of him. <laughs> they tried so hard to replace him, but. The guys they had on here, but the young guys they got now that they recruited are good, and they'll probably be better. So the offense will probably be a little bit better. Ooh. Which is kind of crazy to say, considering they've been putting up you know fifty points. That TC, that <laughs> Alabama Georgia rivalry is going to be the best in college football. You got to get one of those tickets. You know how much that game was this year? No. The Tennessee Georgia game. Mm-mm. It's like seven hundred per ticket. No, thank you. I'm not. I'm gonna hold out hope that I'll get to go see the 49ers in a Super Bowl sometime soon, but I don't know if it'll be this year. Although I do think the Niners have a chance to win. Let's do our little uh, playoff predictions here. I don't know if I want to use go against the spread or anything. I, I just think we can just pick. I mean, or we can whatever. So mm. let's say we'll run through them. Uh, Seahawks, Niners. Niners are favored by nine and a half. I think we're both taking the Niners here. I'm definitely taking the Niners, and they should cover. Okay. I think they're going to cover, too. I think that uh, if you don't think Brock Purdy's a champion, you're a fool. Uh, I just don't think Seahawks are good enough to test him and see if he's a champion. I think the uh, slipper, the magic slipper has come off Cinderella. Yeah, sorry, Gino. <laughs> Your time is up. Uh, next game is Chargers versus Jaguars. Chargers. This game has been going all different kinds of ways with the line, but it's currently when I looked it up at uh, Chargers minus two. Oh, give me the Chargers and the points. I don't think it's going to be that close. This is my Super Bowl pick. Sorry to say. You sticking with? Yeah. That was a year ahead of the curve. You know I'm sticking with them, buddy. Okay. They're getting healthy at the right time. You I know think who I'm Jacksonville with. figures it out and beats the Chargers. I think Jacksonville wins. Pass it back. I'll take it. Because you definitely smoke it over there, buddy. <sighs> okay. Now, listen. And next week, y'all heard it here first. Chargers over the Chiefs. I'm, I'm just giving y'all. I'm just going to give it to y'all. Well, bit. we'll run through the whole, we'll, the whole chingadera. Uh, all right, Dolphins, Bills, two is out. Cover, 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 cover. Yeah, Bills minus thirteen. Um, what? <laughs> there's gonna be so many questions surrounding Tua. It's like, oh, you've been out for a concussion. Your third one of the no year for like for three weeks. Creating. It's that, that's the only I question know, but with the whole give him a protocol and all this stuff, <clears throat> people's hearts exploding. You know those things. No, because by Friday they're gonna be like, "Oh, he's cleared," but Mike McDaniel's already ruled him out. That's what's gonna happen, bro. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Giants versus Vikings. Vikings favored by three. I want to say the Giants are gonna win this game. I really do. I just don't believe in Kurt. Playoff Kirk is just not that guy, but the Giants have no like it's just so they have no bad. umph to them. I'm gonna take the Giants with the points. How about that? I'm yeah, see, that's I think I'm on. I think it's a close game that the Giants can win, but I don't trust them to. So I think the Vikings win, but I I'll take a field goal for sure because that might be it or a one point nineteen twenty some weird stupid game. That the Giants always play. Uh, Ravens versus Bengals. Bengals minus eight and a half. 
no Lamar. Taking the Bengals with the points because that tells me that no Lamar. Yeah, Lamar's not playing. So, yeah, Bengals can put up 35 if they put it together, which I think they will. And then. No, their defense plays them the toughest out of anybody in the league, but they don't have a. They can't score enough. Right. So I don't think they can win. Then we have your Cowboys versus the Bucks. Which yeah. scares the shit out of me because we're going against Tom Brady, but we'll cover the two and a half. It is two and a half point spread. Let me ask you this now, especially considering you're playing the Bucks. I don't think you should be allowed in the playoffs if you have a losing record. Mean. Wouldn't you? I listen. I know they won their division, but if you have a losing record, that you should that should be a disqualification. Like, wouldn't you rather have the Lions in the playoffs than the Bucks? Got to win your division, man. That's a that's a benefit. That's an arbitrary that's grouping. Division. It's an arbitrary grouping. It is a grouping based on whatever the it should go. Fuck that, dude. Playoffs should be based off a conference. You can have it division play just for proximity for travel purposes, but it should be based on overall conference. And then the division should only be just used as a tiebreaker. You have to, the way that you don't have to, why do you have to Mike? Why can't we change the rules? Because the way that there has to be some benefit of winning a division, in which you have why twice because of the way the schedule is. That's the only. That's okay, that but if it, if you look at it, the from, only team that you have a full round robin with. So that way, that's only. I fair, know, but if you who win should be no. If you look at it from the perspective kind of, of you play those teams twice a year because of proximity, and so you don't have the wear and tear of travel on you. No, you play them like that because they're in your division because it's not a proximity thing. Because Bill Buffalo travels from the top of the world to Miami, Florida. Proximity yeah, but not east to west. What do you mean? But Buffalo's not playing the Chargers twice a year. Yeah, but shit, how far is it from? About a third. New York to Miami. About a third. And let's see, what are all these other divisions? You can leave Buffalo at breakfast and be in Miami for lunch. You leave Buffalo for breakfast to play in San Diego, and you're getting there for dinner. And you're tired, and then you go to bed. It's a waste of a day. No, you don't. You get there by lunch. Do you know how long the flight is? It's four hour flight with a three hour tower difference. So if you leave Miami to go to a place in San Diego. You then why is everybody bitch about traveling time. so much? I'm just saying, why do you have to look at it like that? Why can't you look at it from the other perspective to try and accommodate my feelings? What do you mean? Because if you go by conference first. And the Bucks have a losing record, then the Lions are above them. So even though they've been sectioned into divisions, who cares? Who cares? Let's just say that it goes conference first, then division, then whatever. Then you would need to change the whole schedule. Right, that, that but if you did do that, schedule doesn't equal up. That's fine. So what if that what what if that was the the way that it got fixed? Would you prefer that so that there no, wasn't anybody I'm with willing. a losing record in the playoffs? I don't care about your losing record shit. Cause they could have had a winning record if they wanted to. Okay, so, so um, then if the Bucks end up beating the Cowboys and going on and winning the whole damn thing, and they got in the playoffs with a losing record, you'd just be like, "Yep, we lost to they losers." Were the best team. Yeah, they were the best team. The the uh, Saints have done it. They went on a run. And they didn't win it all, but they went on a run with the. I hope record. now. I hope the Bucks beat the Cowboys and then lose next week, just because they'll you be said playing this. the Niners. Oh, even better, even better. I hope Brock Purdy wears a Jimmy G patch. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somehow the Giants win too. Okay, so that being said. Who do you think uh, represents in the Super Bowl now that we have a playoff picture? Because we also have the Eagles and Chiefs you. not playing. No, God bless America. Who is in the Super Bowl, though? So you got the Chargers, you're saying, you. right? Hey, you don't have to ask me who the fuck the other team is going to be in the Super well, Bowl. Well, I would like for you to clear it out because we are in an audio huh? style platform here. Huh? What do you oh, what are you talking about? Audio style? Do I have to okay. make this any more clear? <laughs> I mean, Cowboys, is it any more clear, Chargers. 
Do, do we have to make it in? Yeah, okay? I didn't know if you were going to do this with your brain or if you're just going to do huh? it with your black heart. Hey, four, I need you to show up on Monday, four. Four shows up on Monday, we're fine. Who's number four, four on the on box? No, no, no. You see this four? You see this four? Yeah, it's on backwards, crisscross. Yeah, I did it on purpose so everybody can see his name. Just in case for those people who didn't. Yeah, know but when it's on YouTube, it's reverse, so it says they can, they can understand it. They, 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 they can understand it. They know what it means. They can read backwards. Toxerp. He's toxic Press syrup. Scott. Press Prescott four. Four, do your thing. You had your bad game Sunday versus the commander. Get it out your system. Yeah, Time versus the commanders. His confidence is lacking going into this Monday night game where all the lights are just He's on him. He's the Cowboys him. quarterback. He's never lacking for confidence. He's the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Confidence is never lacking. Mm-hmm. We can lose by 30 and we're never lacking confidence. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Stupidity. Cowboys I guess he wears it well. Phoenix, Arizona. February 16th, three days after my birthday. Let's have some fun, baby. I'll tell you what, buddy. If the Niners and Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, we're going. On me. Niners and Cowboys can't go to the Super Bowl. Oh, damn it. Well, then, maybe next time. (laughs) Uh, NFC Championship is the best you'll get. Well, I fucking know that. That's a joke, Mike. I know you know that. <laughs> Don't explain. <laughs> Believe me. It. Now the chicken is all the way across the road because you took it there on a leash. Uh, speaking of funny, funny, ha 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 jokes. I don't know what you're watching, uh, but I just watched Andrew Santino's stand up called Cheeseburger on Netflix. It was quite delightful. I recommend it. If you're I the started the up. Bernie Madoff thing. So how, I was going to ask, it. how how is Bernie? Is he a nice it's, fella? Bernie was definitely that. Hey, yo, so Bernie was robbing people for like 30 years. <laughs> like, like, how the f- did he get away with this for 30 years? White bro? guys do it better. Bro, no, no, this is complete. Like, based on watching this, it's complete oversight, bro. Yeah. Like, how, how did he manage to get under... Bro, I'm going to tell you, the scheme that he had was so good. Yeah. And they're lucky that technology has come as far as it did. Because if it had, Bernie Madoff would be like, you know, he was like over, like he was in the billions. Like yeah. he was cleaning people out for billions. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was, he's <laughs> top <laughs> level scumbag. <laughs> top level scumbag. Like, yeah. scum of the earth scumbag. <laughs> Motherfucking Madoff. Like, bro, <laughs> listening to this, like, Bottom of the barrel. One dude was like, "Yo, I went and gave him a hundred thousand, and he told me how good it was gonna be. So I went and let, emptied my life savings and gave him the other nine hundred thousand. <laughs> you gave him your whole million because he made one good deal for you. You've got to be a fool. Well, that's but that, when you're that, that's working, any good drug you, dealers. You give the first taste for free. You have to lose money the first transaction to get paid." Teach a man to fish, he'll feed himself forever. Convince a man you have the best fish, you'll have a patron for life. That's all I'm <laughs> saying, man. There's a business to it. <laughs> you know, when I, when I say, Make people bro, think it's not even possible for them. When I say watching this, it just teaches you and you learn like how easily being around the right people or knowing the right things to say can get you in the right room and get people to do shit for you that they have no business doing. But because you say this or do that, everybody's just like, okay, it'll get done. Like, wow. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Man, when I say dirty, my man had a business on one floor <laughs> and the dirty business two floors underneath. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that dude was... Hey, bro, when I say Bernie was getting money, I mean, was getting, where did it all go? Because every time he got into a situation, he had to go borrow money. So where was all the money that you've been stealing? Where is it going? Where he just, it that going? was part of the, the con, part of the gig, was he was never going to spend his own money. So when he had to borrow money, it's because he wasn't going to spend <laughs> his own stash. He was constantly <laughs> owing people for not, like, it's just... That's a that's a con man mentality is well, it's still not gonna come out of my pocket. How but, can I get other people to 
the FCC was complicit me. because they did two audits, never came back with nothing, and he used that as, oh, well, y'all see, they audited me. I'm clean. Let's get this money. <laughs> Greed will eat you from the inside, but he was really good at it. Hey, yo, when I say good at it, that man, hey, yo, he started in like 90, no, no, it was before that. He started in like 80, 70 something, and they didn't lock him up to 08. My man didn't go to jail to 08, and he started this in like the 70s. You know Jay-Z like, has a tattoo of his face on his back? I would, too. If he helped make me billions of dollars, because he probably Jay Z probably made money off bringing it off. I'm just making things up, probably. Oh, okay. I'm about to say if he really did, he probably would, because he probably made him. Yeah, money. And you and his good. I'm sure he definitely uh, gives him a wink and a handshake when he sees him. Yeah, like, like the people who got paid you can't got paid. be in like, that type of level without crossing paths with people like that and then if you end up being a part of the club it's because you're cool for some reason you get him in the room he'd be like man invest in this don't do it through me but do it through somebody else because i ain't really investing your money i'm scheming but these people are and this is a good investment he's like no this is a real one (laughs) (laughs) oh what else all right so it's interesting so you dig it because that's yeah you dig it the high level scheming is Mm -hmm. very interesting um, Snowfalls, they, uh, they're doing new season. Are they on like season six now? Yeah, new season. Snowfalls nice. back. Married at first sight is back. So we're in full bloom over here, man. You know, I got my recorded show. So these are shows that recorded. So I can watch them anytime. Yeah, because football with college being off and done, and then NFL is now strictly winding down. Yeah, strictly playoff status. Basketball is in a little bit of purgatory to where it's like all the starters aren't playing right now, so the games are a little bit whack to watch because everybody's kind of like getting ready for the March move. So it's kind of just like it is the time to start picking up other shows that you've put off for a little while. So I dig that. I find Law and Order's back. So yeah, I got a lot of shit popping, man. Both of them, SBU and uh, Organized Crime. Well, let us know yeah. if anything's worth watching or anything, any new twists come up. I mean, if I watch it, it's worth watching, man, you know? Mm, I don't know about this I'm, statement. I'm me. My, uh, my mom recommended something I'll never watch, but it's called The Pressure Cooker. It's like a cooking show that's like Big Brother on Netflix. Oh, I watch uh, Cook It All Cough. That's my shit. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been on cooking shows, but I kind of associate that with drinking a lot. I don't know why I went to watch cooking. Uh, Like, just the fact that I always had cooking shows on for, like, years. (laughs) But I was also drinking for years. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind of over that feeling. As a new member to the FBG, I love cooking shows. What's FBG? Fat Boy Gang, man. You know what I'm saying? You threw me off with the new membership. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't fed all my life. This is more of a last couple years thing. Yeah, but okay. So not new, new, like used new, kind of like yeah. my car. It's like is is new to me, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody else knows it's older shit. All right, nothing yeah. new in that front. I uh, well, kind of, kind of the similar thing to something I watched. I watched The Northman finally, which it came out like. That well, that's kind of old new. It's uh, it's like uh, the guy from True Blood, the 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 blonde haired guy, Skarsgård, whatever. Um, he's basically a Viking, you know, eight ninety five mm-hmm. A.D. and he's got to do some revengey stuff, and it's all mm-hmm. primal Never and seen either one of those shows. disgusting. And I love that kind of stuff. So I finally watched that, and it was okay. It was pretty good. It took me only a couple of sittings to get through that. And then I was looking at what's coming up on Netflix because I'm just I'm trying to figure out something to get into, but everything is boring. Um, Vikings Valhalla is coming back, which is the Northmen adjacent. So I'm excited to watch that. I love that kind of stuff, man. I know you think it's silly and stupid, but uh, I like it. I like it. Just primal stuff, man. I dig it. I dig it. Barely any clothes. 
hand to hand combat. There's also barely any clothes on naked and afraid. You like that too? No, because Vikings Valhalla mm-hmm. is basically naked and afraid in the year 900. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a historical piece. Oh, well, it's about that time to wrap up. And since we did, uh, we were talking about celebrities dating earlier. Who's your top five celebrity crushes? Well, number one is Jennifer Lopez. So that will never change. J-Lo. Isn't that so nice that your number one has been the same for like 20 years? Yes. That's pretty she's sweet. That's pretty yeah, cool. Still and she's still fire. Yeah. Oh, uh, agreed. Number two is Ari Fletcher. If you don't know who she is, go Google her. Shout out to you, Ari. Okay. Uh, number three is a porn star, but she's oh. also kind of a celebrity to me. Her name's Maya G. Okay. <laughs> celebrity to something. me. Yeah. I mean, she's got porn, so I'm pretty sure she's celebrity to number two. Okay. I'd be, crushed. I'd be crushing on her. I like all her pictures. Uh uh-huh. um. You're an analog <laughs> guy only, I'm sure. Okay, so that's three. Uh Holly. Holly's always gonna be in my celebrity cuss. The Holly Berry. Even though she Yeah. I'm always got love for Holly, even though I crowned her earlier. Always got that Holly nice. love. And number five is I can't even think of her name. <gasps> Damn, why well, I can't think of her name? Because you're rude. She's not the ever gonna from, the girl from Quick Um Swim Fan. I don't know her name. Can't think of her name. The white chick? Yeah, buddy. I had a crush on her. When oh, I was because there. she's crazy? She's a crazy white chick? That's why you had a crush <laughs> on her? Nope. I just had a crush on her. I don't know. Can't crazy white name. chicks fuck the best. <laughs> I don't know. I've never fucked a crazy white chick. So I couldn't. I couldn't Whatever. <laughs> Wise. Um. Why if you I? haven't, then I feel bad for you. Everybody should, including other white chicks. <laughs> it's an experience. <laughs> Erica Christensen, that's her name. Yeah, that's weird. I don't like... Wasn't she also in some other creepy movie right around then? Like a neighborly type of weirdness? Oh, no, I just had a crush on her. I don't know, it might have been a weird I crush. did not. She's a and budget um... Julia Stiles. And I, um, I have a I will mention, but I can't think of her name right now. What's the name of the damn show? All right, you think of that. So my top five celebrity crushes. Although I got to rethink this one. I'm going off looks only. I'm just going superficial, surfacey, and it's only because it's always like Gabrielle Union has been on my list for a very long time. Although I don't like what she's been saying lately. Margot Robbie is on my list. Do you know who Margot Robbie is? No clue. Have you seen The Wolf of Wall Street? Oh. She's the wife. The blonde wife. The... Okay, so you agree. Okay. (laughs) That's a winner. Number three, just because she's been on my list for a long time, is Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood? You had a crush on Carrie Underwood? Bro, Bro, she has some of the best looking hair ever. I got a thing for hair, man. (laughs) Yeah, Carrie Underwood, I don't know. That's the book. I mean, everyone has their own choice. Carrie Underwood is like... Whatever. You're throwing whoever on the list, all right? It's my list, damn it. That's why I shut up. It's your list. Carrie Underwood is just... I don't know. I ain't never really had no... I like regular girls. Yeah, like the girl who played in um, she's out your league. She's like a regular chick, but I like her too. Okay, Whitney Houston's on my list. Everybody loves Whitney at some point, but like now, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was say. no necrophilia yeah, for this guy anymore. She's so. And then my fifth, because I've always had a crush on her, is Jessica Rabbit. I have no clue who. You've is. never seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Are you really talking about a make believe character? Uh, well, 
I mean, she does have a voiceover, but... Mm. If I jerked off to her when I was a kid, she's real to me. <laughs> yeah, don't say that again out loud. People are watching. <laughs> if I jerked off to her when I was a well, kid, actually, told the world she's that real she to me. Six times in one day, so shit. Uh, it's been getting point. worse. It's been getting worse. <laughs> I hate to say it. I thought we were going to get through this whole thing. We almost made it. Uh, yeah. But I can't lie. It's getting mm. worse. I need to stop. My dick hurts. Bro, your hands and your wrists. <laughs> now nah, my hands are rugged as shit. I, that probably leads to my dick hurting so much. Your hands are rugged and you still masturbate? That, like, that you don't feel... Have you found this other person, this honorable mention yet that you're going through? And no, my honorable not. mentions are Elaine from Seinfeld and I Jane Fonda. Because I used to jerk off to Jane Fonda workouts and with I the high socks. The name of the show. Bro, how can I not think of the name of the show and I finished the whole thing? Um, what was it? Recruits? The Recruit? Is it on Netflix? No, no, no. No, it was on Netflix. I know they were recruits. They were like in the CIA or some shit. Yeah, there's, is it new? Fairly new? Kind of new. Yeah, it's called The Recruit. It's on Netflix. No, no, no. I, no, no, not that guy. Um, not that guy. It's a guy? The guys on the face of the recruit is um man, I can't think of the show, but she she's so fine. Uh, this is my life. No, really, she's she's so fine, but I can't I can't think of the name of the show. So fuck it, fuck her. Ooh, I just thought of <laughs> three. Okay, so since you can't think of it, when you were a kid, because that was kind of I also put in there, like you know. When I was a kid, when I started jerking off, that's who I was jerking off to. But uh, <laughs> you jerking off to a fucking make believe rabbit. You don't feel you don't feel like <laughs> weird telling people that. No, look up Jessica Rabbit and tell me that you don't want to jerk off to her today. I would never jerk off to Jessica Rabbit ever, and definitely not today. <laughs> I'm forty. Why would I jerk off to a like, uh, make believe person? Well, I, don't I mean, know. I'm just you. Know. But I also, so I, uh, Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell. That's a winner. Now we're back on track. Okay. Um, Kelly Bundy, because Kelly's are okay. just slutty in the okay. 90s. I'm with and, you, uh, Bundy. Moesha, who didn't want to get down with Moesha? Moesha was okay. I don't know, man. She was all, they were all in the same little pool there. Moesha. I liked her better than the, the sister from Family Matters. She was just all too. You like Moesha better than the sister from Family Matters? Oh, I'm, I'm at the disagreement. See, the sister from Family Matters, I liked later, like the second half of the series, because when she got hotter, she got nicer. But in the beginning, she was just so mean all the time. She's just a raggedy little sister. Sister from you know I used to love Blossom. You know who Blossom is? Uh, I know the show. I never saw it though. You used to have a crush on Blossom. Oh, Topanga, duh, duh, duh. Everybody that was the first Topanga. chick our age with big boobs. It was like fucking Topanga. <laughs> Topanga. Everybody likes Topanga. Oh, man. All right. Well, on that, I think that's where we'll leave it is Topanga because she was the hottest mm -hmm. growing up because she was our Topanga age. Topanga was man. the hottest. And Topanga, shout out. If you're still single, you know what I'm saying? Don't holler at me, but I'm just saying because we're both old now. And you're probably like crusty. But... It's our age, Mike. She's only as crusty as you and probably in better shape because she's got celebrity treatment. I won't lie about me being old and crusty, bro. I know, but you have to say, well, she wouldn't be in worse shape than you are if we're the same age-ish. Nah, she's just as crusty as me with money, though. Yeah, so then she would be in better shape than you. So why are you dogging this? She's never going to date you. You talk she, about this lady like this. She wouldn't date me anyway. She's rich. I'm not. That would you be dating. I'm down. <laughs> well, Topanga, if you're out there. And you want to follow through on Mike's glorious pitch that I, is irresistible. 
to many, <laughs> if not all. And just <laughs> slinging his beautiful black vibes out there. <laughs> he's just on like suckering like in. Just ninety-two Q. He's got that. <laughs> he's got that Louis Vuitton vagina wallet on deck, ready to go as soon as this date is solidified. He's yeah. hitting that green purchase button to make his payments over the next six years. It'll be worth it. All right. Well, on that note. Thank you all for hanging out. Mike, I love you. It's so much fun to be with you all the time. Love you too, my God, man. You have a Do us a too, favor. Man. Give us a share, follow, like, subscribe situation. Something like that. It helps. It's fun. More people see it and talk about it. And they're like, have you seen this goofy shit? It's a lot of fun. So please do that. You can follow Mike at BlackIrish213. You can follow myself at Brendan McCorkle Comedy. And you can follow us at Black Irish Pod. I'm going to try and get better at the social media thing, but until I hire somebody, it's probably going to be about where it's at. So <laughs> do the hard work for us and follow us. We'll be putting stuff out there. I love you, buddy. Be good to yourself. I hope the Cowboys lose and the Niners win. It'll be good for all people. Prescott, you'll see him again next week, people. You know why? In the booth. He's going to be a winner. He's going to be a winner. He'll be the halftime winner, winner. correspondent. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. I love you guys. Peace out.